Hey y'all, prepare yourselves for the retard man. It's me, you've never heard a sound like the retard man. I'm making a YouTube video. Is this what we're doing now? You have to sniff the camera. He's rubbing on the, he's rubbing his head on the microphone, on the camera, all over it. Oh, thank you. Ugh, I got a cat, guys. Cat re pussy reveal. <laughs> uh, you guys didn't see that joke coming, did you? All right, baby. Get out of here. Beat it. I don't want to see you around here no more. Hello, my gamers and tax evaders alike. Man, did that did that always sound that goofy? Was that was that just something that sounded stupid every time that I said it? It was starting to seem like I'd never make a YouTube video ever again, wasn't it? Well, you were probably uh, feeling pretty dumb right now because you're you're wrong. Here I am. As you can see on the screen here, if it's even visible with how bright it looks on the screen that I'm seeing right here, uh, we're talking about this fucking abominable creature right here. Her name. Is Megan the Sti- no, uh, She-Hulk. We're talking about She-Hulk. So I don't know if, uh, people here are aware or not, but I am, uh, kind of a Marvel fanboy, I guess. I'm like, you could call me, like, a logical Marvel fanboy, maybe? I don't know if logical's the right word, uh, maybe just, like, honest. Like, I, I look at what I like, and I appreciate it. You know, Infinity War, Endgame, loved it. Thor Ragnarok, great. And then I look at the things that I don't like, and I go, STOP! PLEASE! Get a hold of yourself, Marvel! Now, I don't know how this show can be so simultaneously horny for She-Hulk, but also so utterly uh, misleading in its representation of She-Hulk as a character. I mean, She-Hulk in the comics is uh, just kind of a party girl. She has fun. She breaks the fourth wall. She is her own character in that she's nothing like the fucking Hulk. And they definitely do that with this show. She is nothing like the Incredible Hulk. But also, the Incredible Hulk is not the Incredible Hulk. He's Mark Ruffalo. Nobody, I don't hear anybody else saying that, but that's my word, Mark Ruffalo. Fuck Mark Ruffalo. I hear some people say that Mark Ruffalo is a good actor. Eh, he was okay in like the first Marvel fucking, what is it? Avengers. He was okay in Avengers. Like, you know, he didn't, he didn't stand out. I thought he was good in it. What else have I seen Mark Ruffalo in? Um, Shutter Island, is that the, the movie is called? I mean, yeah, he's, He's okay in Shutter Island. He's, he's not a standout actor, man. But I will say that his portrayal of Bruce Banner in the first Avengers movie was spot on. But, uh, yeah, he doesn't really play the Hulk very well. Bruh. 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 And sadly for us, neither does... God damn it, what's her name? Tatiana Maslany. She's... I mean, she's working with what she's got, and what she's got is not very good. It's been some of the laziest, worst writing that I've seen in a very long time, and I would go so far as to venture a guess and say that this might be the worst writing that we've seen in the entire MCU. Like, I'd rather watch Captain Mar- I'd rather only be allowed to watch Captain Marvel for the rest of my life than have to see a season two of She-Hulk. Nothing would upset me more than if they made a season two of She-Hulk God damn it, baby. Cat's name is Oscar, by the way. Nothing would upset me more if they made another season of She-Hulk and they kept everything exactly the same. Same writers, same director, same everything. That would be despicable and outright pretty much a war crime. Like fucking Tony Stark in like the first Iron Man movie. Kevin Feige just standing there with like mountains exploding behind him. But instead of mountains, it's his franchise that's just crumbling beneath his feet. What I don't really want to talk about today actually, if you can believe it, is She-Hulk, but rather the MCU at large. Um, I think that uh, M the MCU has lost a lot of what really brought me to it in the first place. I remember my mind being blown when I was a kid. Jesus, fucking flies. This is my life now, by the way. There's just flies flying around. There's a fucking cat going insane. I don't know what I've become. It's fucking sad. A lot of what appealed to me about the first original bout of Marvel movies was the fact that there was all these tie-ins and that they were all a part of the shared universe. As a kid, that fucking blew my mind. I was like, I didn't even know you could do that. I didn't know that was allowed. I'm only half joking. I even though I know that they own all of these things, right? You know, I know it's all under the guise of Marvel. For some reason, it just didn't click to me that you could just combine all of these characters. I didn't really read comics as a kid, so I didn't know that, like, you know, all these characters crossed over. All I knew was, like, Spider-Man was in his own movie, you know, Tobey Maguire, and it was just Spider-Man. There was just Spider-Man, and then they had that Iron Man movie. It's just Iron Man, you know what I mean? It's the Hulk, it's just the Hulk. They're all in their own separate places, you know? But when they started bringing characters together, that fucking blew my mind. 
and it felt like real, like I was seeing into a different world, kind of, and these were actual stories about real superheroes in another world, and it was like, for lack of a better word, as stupid as this sounds, it was kind of magical. And maybe this is me just becoming more cynical as an adult, uh, but it, it's really lost a lot of the magic that it once had. Um, and I don't know if it's that, that I've just kind of grown up and maybe I'm tired of seeing this format of all of the, these characters in the same place and, and that has lost its appeal to me. Or perhaps it's just that the writing has gotten worse and that it's become less interesting because they handle the shared universe worse than they used to. I don't know which one it is, but um, it just isn't working for me anymore. Like I said, I used to feel this deep, interest in the world that I was watching and I actually cared about the world building and I want to say what I think it was was that it took itself seriously as a story. It took itself seriously as a world. The people that I was watching felt like real people and not like cartoon characters. But now in every single movie and, and show and everything they hardly feel like real people. But then things kind of start to go off the rails a little bit, especially when we get to She-Hulk, where the comedy has become so fucking cartoonish and just offensively bad, it just doesn't work for me. And it's hard for me to take the world seriously when the writers don't take the world seriously. Take, for instance, um, the biggest disappointment of my entire life, uh, Hawkeye. I actually kind of liked Hawkeye. I thought Hawkeye was okay. It was definitely not like the worst of the Marvel TV shows, but it wasn't great. Um, and I think that they did a huge, HUGE disservice to the character of Kingpin, played by Vincent D'Onofrio. In the Daredevil series, he was one of the best villains that I've seen ever. I mean, every time that he was on screen, you were like, what is gonna happen? What's this guy's next plan? What is he gonna do? This, I mean, he's so power hungry, he's so powerful, he's so confident. You just, you don't know what to do with this guy. And another thing is that he is dead fucking serious all the time. I mean, he doesn't jest, he doesn't joke. He's a completely serious character meant to be taken as a serious threat, a serious real world threat. Unlike, say, you know, Thanos, a, a, a fucking giant purple alien. That's not gonna happen in real life. But Kingpin? Kingpin can happen in real life. And that's what I want to see in Kingpin. That's what allures the character to me. That's what makes the character interesting, is that I can see this being a real person. And that isn't to say that Thanos is a bad villain. I thought he was a great villain. He's just not as relatable as a real life mob boss. Now, take that Kingpin and apply it to the Hawkeye show, and he is a he's a cartoon. He's a fucking joke. He's not a he's not a serious threat anymore. He's just a cartoonish joke just like the Russian mobsters Even though these were like real evil people who were uh, kind of I, I think they were led by Echo I can't even tell it's so confusing and also Echo is supposed to be taken seriously as a character They're making a whole fucking show about her But um, she leads a gang of the most cartoonish villains you've seen in your life How can you take a character seriously when her fucking henchmen are just like hey, bro? Hey, hey, I'm, I'm a Russian bro, bro, trust the bro. You can't take that character seriously It's it you can't and that's what I'm looking for when I'm watching like the Marvel shows I'm not expecting it to be the most serious thing in the world. That was one of the reasons why I thought that Thor Ragnarok worked so much better than the other two entries in the Thor franchise. The first two Thor movies, even though there was quite a bit of humor sprinkled into them, still managed to take themselves way too seriously and take the character of Thor way too seriously. But when we see Thor get off the fucking planet Earth, Fuck Thor being on Earth, it's boring. And we throw him into this wacky, zany situation where he's lost his hammer, he's on a planet he's never been to before, he has no idea what's going on. It led to a much more engaging story, and uh, it was also very funny. But it still managed to take the story seriously enough that I could also get invested in the story and take it seriously myself. And they didn't really do that with Hawkeye. They're not doing this with She-Hulk. I don't really care because the stakes are non-existent. And I could see a comedy working with Marvel. I'm sure that it could, but uh, I just don't see it with She-Hulk. I, I just think that it makes the world building much more muddled, confusing, and stupid. Just all around stupid. What they've done to Wong 
is an embarrassment. I mean, this last episode, oh my god. He he couldn't deal with a magician on his own. He had to bring She-Hulk in. He was suing him in America instead of just, like, stopping this guy. I've read a bunch of the Doctor Strange comics, the early ones, and a big part of what Doctor Strange does is stop other sorcerers. He used to deal with these paranormal threats. I, I know that, like, you know, Donnie Blaze, terrible name, by the way, sounds just like Johnny Blaze and is needlessly confusing to fans. Donnie Blaze is... I mean, yeah, he's not a serious threat. He's just a guy that's, like, making wormholes, I guess? Which, I, now that I say it like that, that does sound like a serious threat, doesn't it? That somebody can just make wormholes through space and time. That doesn't... That doesn't sound like a good thing to just be, like, going around doing willy-nilly. But Wong wants to deal with this threat, right? He wants to get rid of this guy, and he decides to sue him just so that we can have some wacky courtroom drama with Jen, the lawyer. Which doesn't work at all because the writers have no idea how to write a courtroom drama according to their own admission. So then later into the story, uh, Donnie Blaze releases a bunch of demons from a literal hell dimension into the real world, and Wong has to go and deal with it. And instead of calling in, like, more magicians or, like, Doctor Strange or the Avengers or any other people, you know, uh, he decides to bring in his lawyer, Jennifer Walters, aka She-Hulk, to deal with an interdimensional threat that surely she's, I guess, equipped to deal with. I don't know why he picked her instead of any of these other people, but he did. Uh, and you know why? It's because it's her show, obviously, doy. It has to be her because it's her show. Otherwise, why is this plot even happening? And that's what the question should just end right there. If this plot can't make sense in the story that you're trying to tell, it shouldn't be in the story that you're trying to tell. And it just ends up being goofy and trying to be funny and not really succeeding at being funny while also just muddling these other ki No! Where'd she go? Oh no, not my creepy CGI green waifu. How could I... How could you lose her? The use of humor has just made Wong into a silly character that I don't take as seriously anymore. The MCU is no longer about telling us serious stories about these characters. It's creating products that people can consume. And that's not to say that the movies haven't always been products for consumption, but that used to not get in the way of the big picture. And the big picture was, yes, make money, but also make art that people will like. Because in the grand scheme of things, if you make art that people are gonna like in the long run, you're gonna keep making money for longer. And I don't see Marvel lasting. I think we're seeing the last legs of this franchise unless we get some serious shakeups because it's honestly fucking sad what's happening here. Kang can't save this franchise. I, I'm sorry, new rock stars. I know that you decided that everything has been caused by Kang up until this point, but it hasn't been because the writing is just laziness. It's just boring. There's not enough consistency. And I'm sorry, it's not been Kang. Anyway, I don't have much else to say. I just kind of wanted to rant about the MCU because it's sad what I've seen happen to a franchise that I once loved. And um, yeah, I, I know I've, I've said this at the end of every single video for a while, but I still, I mean it this time and I'm completely serious. This will be my last video ever and I'm gonna, I promise you I'll be seeing you all in hell. Uh, God bless, amen, uh, all hail the Antichrist. Hey y'all, prepare yourselves for the retard man. Man, thought you'd never heard a sound like the retard man. Man, you'll know turn around with the retard man starts to land.